In today's show, we're going to take a deeper dive into preventing premature graying and hair loss, drawing upon some recently published scientific articles that talk about the histopathology of premature graying hair and also hair loss. We're going to talk about senile alopecia, which is age-associated hair loss and premature graying. Why does this happen and what can you do about it? Most importantly, specifically for both men and women, talk about the differences hormonally. For men, there's obviously a concern with dihydrotestosterone, DHT, how it impacts the hair bulb and the follicle causing male pattern baldness, but that's not the only factor. It turns out that inflammation, accelerated biologic aging, cellular senescence are all linked to premature skin and hair graying and hair loss. And so it's important that we understand the mechanisms here. We're going to talk about some histology, some science, and talk about tactics and what to do because... I don't know about you, but you know, when you start to notice your hair thinning, it can be a little depressing. That's just a, a marker that maybe you're aging and that, that doesn't make you feel good. And graying of the hair and specifically hair loss is really hard on one's mindset. And so there's a lot of good evidence to suggest that we can augment this. We can slow this down. We can do something about this by decreasing levels of chronic inflammation, reducing oxidative stress, improving glutathione biosynthesis, and much more. So one of the papers we're going to talk about that was really phenomenal, should you want to explore this concept even further, titled Getting Under the Skin of Hair Aging, the Impact of Hair Follicle Environment. So it turns out, like other tissues we've talked about in the body, whether it's liver health, fat health, muscle, the microenvironment within the epidermis and the epidermal tissue where the hair bulb lives is really important. And so if you have subclinical cardiovascular disease, poor cardiovascular function, if you smoke, if you're exposed to environmental chemicals, have nutrition deficiencies, all of those factors can cause premature graying and hair loss. Now, you might be wondering, what is the prevalence of premature graying? Well, there's an adage that's talked about in the dermatologic research known as 50-50-50, which goes, by age 50, 50% 50 of the population will have half of their head, the hairs on their head, will be gray. And that's the prevalence, roughly. Now, it turns out there's different ethnic differences from genetics and so forth. So individuals of Asian descent or African-American descent generally have less graying, premature graying, compared to Caucasian individuals. So consider that. There is a big genetic element. For example, my father went full gray by age 33, and I started to notice gray, especially around the temples, around that time. But because of my lifestyle, I would hope to think that I've been able to prevent some of the graying that may be predisposed to but also, uh, again, nutritional factors, oxidative stress, all of that comes into play. Now, what about hair loss? Well, over the course of one year, you lose about 0.25% of your hair follicles. That means that every decade, you lose 2.5% of your hair follicles. So between ages 20 and 50, you've lost roughly 10% of the follicles in your hair. And so this is why your hair naturally thins over time. It turns out that in postmenopausal women, there's a dramatic increase in the follicle loss as well. And so this is why progesterone can be very important for women that don't want to have premature hair loss or senile related alopecia. So I think that's really important. But again, there's different types of alopecia. And I think it, it's good to get a, a scope of what we're talking about here in figure A on the focus of oxidative stress when it comes to premature graying and hair loss, you can see the epidermis and the dermis and the, the little muscular layer underneath your skin and the hair bulb. Well, what gives hair its color is the melanocyte and the melanin within the melanocyte. And it turns out that when you're born, you have an adequate amount of melanin and melanocytes, but over time, there's an age-related decline in the melanocyte uh, pool. And it turns out that the environment within the skin can exacerbate the loss of these melanocytes creating gray hair. And so that's why it's really important to focus on lifestyle, metabolic health, minimizing environmental toxin exposure, UV radiation. One of the things that I personally don't do when I'm out in the woods and I spend roughly a month a year out in the backcountry hiking and all that is I don't wear a hat. But after reading this literature, I found that UV stress can actually affect the hair bulb. So I'm going to start wearing a hat when I'm out in the woods because if you're spending eight, 10 hours out in the wilderness, out in the sun, that can cause not only skin damage, but also affect the hair bulb. So that's something that I thought was quite interesting as well. But let's talk about graying of the hair first, and then we'll get into hair loss. This was a really good article titled Gray Hair Baldness and Wrinkles in Relation to Myocardial Infarction, the Copenhagen City Heart Study. And what this found is after a statistical adjustment for possible confounders, we found a correlation between graying of the hair, facial wrinkling, as well as crown top baldness and myocardial infarction in men. 
So going back to that image, what do you see? You see a lot of vessels here. You see veins as well as arteries, small arterioles that are fueling or giving the hair follicle in the bulb as well as the epidermal layer nutrients. So if you have underlying cardiovascular dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, poor circulation, or you smoke or have heavy metal exposure and you don't go in the sauna, you don't get cold on purpose, all these factors, you know, it comes down to circulatory health is really important for improving the health of the hair bulb, the melanocyte, and the skin as a whole. So that seems somewhat basic, but I think it's important to recognize there is a correlation between premature baldness and as well as graying and heart disease, and it turns out that this is really important. So as we further talk about this, I think it's uh, another good image here, figure two, is the age-related changes within the melanocyte and the keratinocyte within the skin. So going from left to right, you have a healthy pool of skin, real thick and, and neatly organized keratinocyte as well as the melanocyte, which provides the hair follicle its color and prevents some of the graying. But as the skin ages over time, again, from UV stress, from psychologic stress, micronutrient deficiencies, oxidative stress, inflammation, and so forth, you see all this disorganization. And that is linked with, again, premature graying as well as hair loss. So it comes down to the basic things that we've been talking about, and we're going to summarize that very soon. However, the scientists say there are age-associated anatomical changes that include a decrease in the number and size of blood vessels, as well as the architectural complexity that explains not only impaired nutritional supplementation, but also the removal of metabolic debris and toxins, meaning that if you have poor blood supply to your scalp, where you want to keep your hair, then it's obvious that over time that would lead to changes within the local environment, leading to the loss of nutrient supply to the hair bulb and also the melanocyte, which can cause premature graying as well as hair loss. So it comes down to metabolic health, cardiovascular health, as well as micronutrient status and decreasing inflammation. So I want to continue on, friends, but just thank you for being here. I'm Mike Mutzel. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Be sure to share this video with a friend who wants to keep their head of hair. We're going to talk about practical tips and takeaways, but I want to thank this show's sponsor, Ice Barrel. So as you know, chronic inflammation is a hallmark of aging, hair loss, and premature graying. And cold immersions are one of the best ways to improve immune health and decrease inflammation. This has been corroborated by many recent studies finding that two minutes once a week can improve many biomarkers linked with longevity and aging. The folks over at Ice Pro make it easier than ever to make cold immersions a consistent part of your health and wellness routine. They make a great looking 110 gallon tank that covers your entire body toe to neck, helping you stay cool this summer. Plus, this tank is 100% American made and they have a nice lid that helps keep the leaves and junk out of your cold water tank. So you can save going to icebarrel.com for slash H-I-H or use the link in the description below. It's an awesome unit. I use it all the time. It looks good in the backyard. People absolutely love this. So let's go on and talk a little bit more about the hallmarks of aging and speak specifically about cellular senescence. And this is a, a topic that we've talked a lot about, but it's important to recognize that cellular senescence not only occurs within the brain, leading to cognitive decline, myocognitive impairment within the muscle tissue, even within your fat tissue, but also within the hair follicles and the keratinocytes that lead to premature graying as well as hair loss. With increasing age, there's intrinsic and extrinsic factors that lead to more dominant telogen phase, resulting in hair follicle miniaturization. With increasing age, the hairs are reduced in diameter with the reduction in the hair density due to the miniaturization. Now, this is because the underlying histopathology within the keratinocytes and the vessels like we talked about becomes augmented and is characterized by increased free radical stress and chronic inflammation. So systemic health really matters here. That's why healthy diet, feeding fasting window, uh, compression, as well as exercise, micronutrients, and circadian rhythm health are really important. But another hallmark of dermal aging is linked with chronic inflammation, as the scientists say, leading to increased levels of prone inflammatory cytokines, proteolytic enzymes, and oxidative stress, which increases damage to DNA proteins and lipids within the hair follicle environment. Young skin also has a different collagen type 1 versus type 3 ratio. The young adult skin has a ratio of 80% collagen type 1 and 15% collagen type 3. However, during aging, this increases the percentage of collagen from type 3 dominating the type 1. And we also know that the chronic inflammation is a future of skin aging. And various studies show that there are genes upregulated in the fibroblasts and the keratinocytes involved in the immune response. So again, if you are experiencing premature graying and or hair loss, 
that could be a symptom of accelerated biologic aging and or inflammation, which means you need to work on your lifestyle. And that's why I know there's soaps and creams and all sorts of, of topical products people use to slow down graying of the hair or hair loss. But if you're not working on systemic health and micronutrients and living a lifestyle that can decrease chronic inflammation and improve the overall metabolic milieu, it's going to be hard to totally slow down this hair loss or graying as a result. So I think that is, is really important to recognize that. Now, you might be wondering, would collagen be effective? Well, anecdotal evidence suggests that collagen is effective for preventing premature wrinkling of the skin and hair loss. Uh, there's no randomized clinical trials to support this, but having bone broths, having collagen in your you know, protein shakes and so forth is something that I just do as an insurance policy. I can't really say definitively that they make a difference, but I will say next month I'll be 41 years old and can train as intense as I did when I was 18 years old. I'm stronger now, don't have joint pain and things like that as a result of changing my diet compared to when I was younger. I've had many clients over the years tell me that they've noticed anecdotally changes in their skin, their hair, their nail quality, nail structure, and there is a correlation between bone mineral density and hair loss and graying of the hair, meaning that people that have higher bone mineral density, more red marrow, generally have less uh, senile alopecia. So that's been, that's been characterized there. All right. Again, we're going to continue on here and talk about another paper about the graying of the hair titled Histopathology of Aging of the Hair Follicle. Why does hair go gray? Well, it turns out there's cellular senescence within the hair follicle like we've alluded to, and this is known as senescent alopecia. And there is chronic inflammation within the skin and the bulb of the hair bulb. And that's really important because for each melanocyte, there, there is five different hair bulbs that that melanocyte is giving the melanin to to create the color of the hair. And so when there's inflammation therein and the melanocytes go into a senescent state, then the hairs become gray. And we know that senescence and slowing senescence and, and purging senescent cells happens with both fasting as well as exercise. So this is really important. If you're worried about keeping your hair, make sure you're resistance training, make sure you're doing HIIT training, and also possibly consider periodic uh, feeding window compression, time-restricted feeding. The scientists say each hair follicle is loaded with a pool of melanocyte progenitor cells, known as stem cells, that self-renew over time. Pigment-producing melanocytes are very active when we're young, and over time, there's a reduction in the melanocyte pool as well as the stem cells. But here's the important thing that the literature clearly shows is we can improve this with our own health status. And so we can bring back this melanocyte pool and help with the stem cells with our lifestyle. And the scientists talk about the factors that are most important for preventing premature graying and helping to keep healthy melanocyte pool to give the, the melanin to the creatinocytes within the hair bulb is uh, minimizing exposure to pollution. So if you live in a major city and you run during rush hour, try to run during the middle part of the day or the evening time, for example, minimize your exposure to persistent organic pollutants and organophosphates by having organic food and not drinking water out of plastic water bottles, for example, not touching the grocery store receipts with a BPA. Smoking. Obviously, if you smoke or vape, even marijuana, please stop. We know that's hard on the cardiovascular system, particularly the microvessels, and that's problematic. Excessive sun exposure can cause weathering of the hair bulb and the shaft. So if you are in the sun, a lot, you know, wear a hat, do something to protect your hair bulbs because that can cause premature hair loss. Nutrition deficiencies, specifically in this, these papers that I've been diving into in preparation for this show, what were uh, the, some of the studies uh, we're talking about? Zinc, selenium, uh, boron, biotin, and silicon were of particular importance when it comes to the micronutrients. Also, insulin resistance, PCOS, particularly for women, this can exacerbate hair loss. There's a lot of anti-androgens that are given to women with, with PCOS to slow down the, um, the alopecia. Uh, so I think it is really important, but again, a common biomarker here is the oxidative stress within the hair follicle itself, and that can cause DNA damage, and that can cause premature graying. The scientists say uh, cases of graying due to environmental factors can sometimes be reversed when the underlying cause is reversed, such as correcting the micronutrient deficiencies, the malabsorption, and decreasing the systemic inflammatory diseases. So I think that's important to recognize. And let's finish off and talk about how hormones, particularly for women, can be very important. This was a study that was published in the journal Menopause recently in the last year or so titled Prevalence of Female Pattern Hair Loss in Postmenopausal Women, a cross-sectional study finding that 52% of postmenopausal women experience hair loss, which is much higher than premenopausal women. Now, why might that be? 
the dearth or lack of progesterone. There's a very important, as this paper talks about, the impact of progesterone on menopausal hair loss, a compre comprehensive review. And it turns out that micronized progesterone can be very helpful for women for preserving both the integrity of their skin, preventing wrinkles, improving the health of the dermal layer, as well as the hair follicle itself. So if, you, if you've gone through menopause and you haven't been tested or working with a functional medicine doctor to look at your hormones and are not considering progesterone, please do so. The literature on micronized progesterone, not synthetic progestins, really supports the use of progesterone uh, to prevent hair loss. And it turns out that the estrogens play a big role here. And this might be why some men who take anti-estrogens when they're taking hormones and so forth experience hair loss because estrogens significantly inhibit hair growth in several mammalian species. But in women, elevated levels during pregnancy lead to thicker hair and longer antigen phase by delaying their transition to the telogen phase. And so it's important to recognize that estrogens play a big role and in humans, they help to improve the thickening of the hair. Several studies have looked at age-matched premenopausal women who have undergone a hysterectomy versus not. And what the studies found is there was a significant increase in skin aging features in premenopausal women who had a hysterectomy compared to those who, who did not, suggesting that the dearth or lack of estrogens can actually accelerate the changes within the hair follicle and accelerate skin aging. So it turns out that estrogens play a very critical role. The scientists go on to say that this study highlights the rapid aging of skin following estrogen deprivation since extensive changes were observed in just 24 weeks after getting a hysterectomy. So it turns out that hormone balance is very important for preventing hair loss. And it has to do with the fact that in low estrogen environments, there's a change in the quantity and quality of the collagen within the skin as well as skin thickness and skin elasticity. So hormones it comes down to play a very important role. So women start with metabolic health, start with lifestyle, diet, circadian rhythm optimization to optimize your hormones. Obviously, we know that insulin resistance can lead to a relative imbalance in the levels of androgens to estrogens and can create a low progesterone environment, which is not good. So it's not just all about testosterone for hair loss. We know that estrogens and progesterone are very, very important. So all of that is to say hormones are very important as well as the environment. You cannot control your genes or change your genes, but you have full control over your environment, your lifestyle, how you sleep, how you manage your stress, your micronutrients, whether you vape, smoke, or do not. All of these things impact the cellular milieu and can possibly reverse or prevent age-related graying and also premature hair loss. And I think that is just really important to recognize that these environmental factors are very important and they impact the age and the function of the hair follicle, the melanocyte, as well as a carotenocyte. So that's what the literature shows. We have control here. We can influence or, or change the trajectory and the evidence is there. Uh, even our own self-care routine, the scientists talk about how... Uh, the types of shampoos that you use could actually accelerate hair loss and also accelerate premature graying. So it's important to minimize your exposure to some of these different chemicals and cosmetic type products, as well as pollution, uh, ozone. And if you spend a lot of time in the sun, wear a hat because that can help prevent the premature aging of the hair follicle itself. And it comes down to inflammation, right? The the environment that your hair follicle is bathing in is going to influence the health biologically of the keratinocyte of the melanocyte. So it's up to you, my friends. Hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you found these papers helpful as well. Definitely get your hormones tested if you're a postmenopausal woman. Optimize your estrogen levels as well as your progesterone levels. In men, if you do have high levels of DHT, you can consider a ketoconazole shampoo. That's something I've been using for a while. Ketoconazole is a natural antifungal agent, but it also has been shown to help inhibit 5-alpha reductase, which converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. This is available over the counter. In Canada, they have a 2% solution. Here in the U.S., they have a 1% solution. Just put it on your head, massage it into your scalp one to two times per week. That might slow down the DHT impact on male pattern baldness, but really important, especially for women, to optimize metabolic health. We know that PCOS, insulin resistance, can worsen hair loss in women especially, and really important stuff, friends. So it comes down to diet, exercise, nutrition, cardiovascular health. You know what to do now. Hopefully you found the show notes helpful and this breakdown of these studies helpful, and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.